Sister Janet. Yes, sister, you are unmute. Praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord. Um, I know this is a, a you know overdue testimony, okay. um, which I want to share. Can I? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I have three daughters. Uh, my elder daughter, uh, who is now nineteen years, but I have been given this testimony. One second. One second. Uh, you yeah. are from Dubai, right? You, we were. Yes, yes, brother. Okay, okay, yes. okay. Please start. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, and now she's uh, 19 years old. Now she's in the word, praise God, she's 19 years. Uh, this is an overdue testimony, but I have been sharing this testimony, you know, over the time. But uh, during that time, I was not in the word, but somehow during, during that time, you know, um, when I was three uh, months, when I was carrying my child and uh, she was bleeding. So there was this one couple who came and who prayed, who were in the word. And they were speaking about, uh, you know, uh, blood of Jesus and covering my room with the blood of Jesus and everything. But I couldn't understand what actually they were speaking that day. And uh, they said, if, you know, if Jesus has given you this baby, he'll definitely take care of your child. But for me, uh, as a new mother and, you know, my first child, so I was so worried. And after, and I was working. So during the third month, uh, at work, I started bleeding. So, um, and I was given the rest for the rest of, uh, you know, the months. Then after 20 days, uh, my boss called me, called me and he asked me, um, Janet, are you fit to work? Uh, do you really want to come back or you need rest? I said, no, no, I want to come back. You know, I'm all fit because all the time I was just saying, thank you, Lord. You know, my baby is safe. If you've given me this baby, I know you will take me through. Uh, and then after my baby, you know, to cut it short, my baby delivered and all the doctors and nurses, you know, they were saying that um, uh, during that time, okay, when the, uh, I missed to inform that during that time, they did the scan and all, they found that I had a biconutal uterus. And when you have a biconutal uterus, uh, there are two openings. So, you know, you can have miscarriages and you may not have full term baby. So all this was, you know, going in my head. But uh, having said that, you know, I had this voice uh, speaking to me, it was saying that, you know, but if, uh, if you have this baby, you know, and uh, Jesus, I had this voice saying that nothing is going to happen. And, you know, God is going to take you through. And all happened was, um, I uh, delivered my first child and a healthy, uh, normal baby, praise God. And the doctors and the nurses, they were so shocked because they said, you know, how uh, it could be possible because uh, it, it could have been a cesarean child having a bicornitol, it was all of that. So all that happened. But I had a healthy uh, baby, praise God. Uh, now she's uh, 19 years old, who is also in the word. And then same thing, then my second child, my second daughter, um, same thing happened during the um, seventh month, I was bleeding. And now um, the same thing I was, you know, looking uh, after the seventh month uh, bleeding and all these thoughts coming into my mind. Uh, and during that time, um, my husband had gone to Bombay because my mother-in-law had to do her angiogram. So he had to fly to Bombay and uh, my, my neighbor who came to my rescue, who had taken me to the emergency, who stayed with me that night and doctor said, uh, I need your husband to sign the papers in case, you know, if you have to go for uh, uh, cesarean and things like that, um, then uh, somehow, you know, uh, this friend of mine was, who stayed with me, she started praying. And all what I was saying was, I realized what I was saying was this, um, the word Philippians um, 1, 6, which said, being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in me will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And Psalm 138, eight, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. So I was speaking, you know, though I was uh, in the hospital and doctor was saying that, um, I was saying, Lord, if you've given me this, if, if you started this, you will get me through.
no matter what this doctor say you know i am not going to listen to what the doctor says so every time i was talking lord jesus if you brought me you will bring me through i will have a healthy baby and all that i was saying and uh, next day my husband came and he had to fly down because he had to fly, uh, sign the documents and um, sign and i was discharged and i had a healthy baby after full term 9 months now after that um i was on my maternity leave so uh, before when i was uh, you know when i was pregnant when i was working i had uh, one colleague who had uh, three four miscarriages before she was a new joiner so as you know i came in contact with her she started sharing her stories and then she was telling me this and then you know i gave us prayers and then during the course of time she conceived now i was on maternity leave and while she was seven months that time um so you know she was in touch with the doctor so the doctor told her that she has a complicated case now see every 3 months she was going through miscarriages but now she was in the seventh month so during this time what happened was um the doctor told her you know you have to go for this abortion because there are complications now i was on the maternity leave she called me she said you know janet this doctor said like this um this is a complication case you know both of them can have problems and we have to abort this child now when she told me the first thing came to my mind was uh first thing it just came out of my mouth and i said um i said chun if jesus has brought you till seven months he will get you through if he's come started his uh, you know if he's begun this good work in you he will complete it you are not going to listen to any doctors you just hold on and keep thanking god that you know your baby is safe and sound and everything is fine and uh, my husband was there next to me as soon as i kept the phone down he said how could you tell that if anything goes wrong you know then what will happen i said nothing doing if you know i was bleeding for three or uh, a second time also i was bleeding during my pregnancy jesus has brought me brought me through he is the same jesus who is going to get that baby as well and uh, it was before it was 3 months she was having miscarriages and now it's the 7th month and definitely uh, she will have the full term baby so i know my husband said that but i said nothing doing i um, you know and i told her don't go for abortion so she did not go for abortion and everything you know went very smoothly she had a, a full term 9 months baby praise god and uh, now he's um, same he's 11 12 years old son and so praise god for that and uh, i really want to give glory to god for you know which uh, same jesus because jesus is the same yesterday today and forever if jesus is has done this to me that is no partiality in the kingdom of god so um so this uh, this is really this is um, all glory to god for that and then um for my third child as well i have gone through the same situation uh when i was 8 uh, month i was going through this bleeding okay and this time it was like yes the devil did tell me okay now what now you have to um this this problem is there and that now whether you're going to have a full time baby but nothing doing i held on to this and i said lord if you have begun this work in me you will complete it you will not leave half the way you will get me through and i just stood on this promise of god i just thank the lord and you know everything went on so smoothly that uh, my third child was born on the christmas eve full term baby so all glory to god this is my testimony of my three children praise the lord praise god so so for the first baby there was a couple who helped you yes so they were in the word and uh, they came and they spoke to me and you know not much did i understand what they were speaking i know obviously they were speaking english but they were talking about the word and and since i was not in the word so much with religious uh, you know prayers novenas and all of that but what uh, i you know uh, caught hold of was if if god has given you this child he will definitely take this child through and you will have a healthy uh, you know baby so this is what and um covering everything with the precious uh, blood of jesus so i held on to that 
But when a person is going through a battle, the mind will be full of lies of the devil. How did you counter that? Yes, brother. Uh, see, brother, every time, but um, every time these thoughts, yes, these thoughts were coming. I didn't know because I was not in the world that time. Every time these thoughts were coming, now see. That is why I'm saying. asking you, well, because you are not in the world, and the doctor has told you all this, yes. and when it comes to yes. a baby, the mother's mind will be totally like a sponge receiving the words of the doctor. Yes. I I I know that I had only kept saying this only. I was crying and saying Jesus. I was saying Jesus, if you've given me this baby, you will take care of the baby. You will get this baby. Only that I was saying, brother. I was crying. All these thoughts were hitting me very badly. I was crying. But I was saying Jesus, you've given me this baby. This is my first baby. Uh, nothing can happen. I was talking to Jesus like that. Brother? Jude! Baba Jude! Jude! Jude is not there? Is there, Papa? Yeah, Papa. Is there, Papa? Do you think this is so easy? What she's saying? She's not in oh, the that's, world. That's, that's what the question I asked. Even no, I had... that's what she's saying today. All this. Do you think it is easy? She's not in the world. First baby, and the doctor has already given her very very good news. <laughs> huh? The yes. devil will be bashing her up night and day. Your, yeah, neighbors, that time. your next door neighbors who are in prayer, you said, were they in the world? Yeah. They were in the world. Ah, so they must have told you something. Yes, they must have told me something. I I only remember this thing that they had said. And you know what my... Um, um, no, no, you every didn't, time tell, me. It you didn't like... tell me. Hold on, hold on. Don't, don't change. What did they say? Hmm. See, I don't remember much, but what I remember was they said, if, if, if God has given, if Jesus has given you this baby, he will take complete care of this baby. You don't have to cry. So they, were the ones, you know? so they were the ones who said to you that he who has yes. started good work in you will take yes, you yes. through and bring it to completion. Yes. Ah. yes. And I held on to that. Like that. I didn't know it was a promise. Say, I didn't know it was like a that. promise. Are, we, I will not eat everything you give me. You're right, brother. See, see, that person was in the world. Yes. And that person gave you the word from Philippines 1. Okay. Yes. And yes. told you that. That's why the pregnancy uh, went up till there. And if you are saying, God is there with me. He has given me the baby. He will take care of everything. But you are, your head is full of cares. Yes. See, yes. That is where most of the uh, Christians or Catholics are making a mess. Is... Having no word, okay. Yes. God is there. He'll take care. But for him to take care, you should give him the care. No. Yes, you have to have the word. Huh? It is the truth. Yes, yes, brother. Because I and Judah both are totally flat. Open. Because when no, you're, you're right. sharing a story like this yes. and not yes. giving us the secret, yes. we will not take it. Jude, why are you ready to take it? Uh. Papa, Jude went to set up some connection. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. So, Jesse, will you take it? Oh, oh, well, she no, no, mentioned... Say, because she's a woman, you don't be on that side. Huh? Be, be, no, no. be honest. No, no, she mentioned one pregnancy. I was like, okay, one pregnancy. After that, she mentioned the second. No, no, this is the, the first third. pregnancy. Hold on, hold on. This is the first pregnancy she's talking about. Yeah, yeah, but it happened for all three. So, I was like, gosh... <laughs> Don't worry, the fourth one will not happen like that. We can. She, she has. She has three children. Uh, Sister Jenna. Yeah, maybe we'll pray yes. for the fourth one. The fourth yes. one will have no issue. That, uh, brother, I have spiritual children now. <laughs> Praise God. Giselle, oh, is your... shall we pray for the fourth one? Spiritual, spiritual brother, spiritual children. Oh, she has okay. many now. She's in Sister Julieta's group, right? 
If I remember yes, yes. yes, sister and Jessie. Giselle, yes, Giselle is your first child, right? Hold on, hold on, yes, she's in yes. Juliet's group. And hold on, Jessie. Just because she's in Juliet's group, you don't give her a soft corner, okay? <laughs> she is a warrior in the world now. <laughs> so, what is your life at that time, and what is her life today? Wow! Yesterday, wow. Uh, brother. Yesterday, uh, I have completed by God's grace, glorious twenty-two. Uh, uh, what do you call it? my wedding anniversary? Twenty-two years. Okay. And uh, this time, only twenty-two. I was thinking about thirty-two or forty-two. <laughs> you see, when you look at her, does it look only twenty-two, or is it looking thirty-two? <laughs> I can't see your face. Oh, I've never seen her. <laughs> You're not seen her. Okay, okay. Brother, uh, you know, I, I, I'm so grateful to you, and I thank the Lord for bringing uh, Brother Johnson as the perfect laborer, not only into my life but into my husband and my children. So this this life is so different, and this time my uh, you know wedding and it was before it was all materialistic. But this time, even though my husband had said that you know there's this gifts, but for me it was like it's completely different being in the word and uh, you know how you came into our life and our spiritual eyes open and being in the word and sharing the word with others, it's. Uh, um, it's 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 just so different. It's just so different. Life is different. Life is uh, more enjoying with Jesus now and sharing, sharing. So, so you mean to say this anniversary was different? It's so different. Compatible, so different. You know, but this twenty second. But you didn't get to go to, for a dance or anything, no? Ah, uh, <laughs> that's that's that was before. That was me before. But now, not not anymore. Not anymore. Tell us more. Um. Ah, so. Uh, hi. Good to see you. Now I see your face. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I've seen your daughter because she comes on the children's ministry, but I've not seen you. Okay, because I, I was with my children before for the testimonies. Yes, yes. Papa, you know who, who is her daughter? Is Papa there? Oh, Papa is muted. Now looking at her, doesn't she look like 32 years wedding anniversary? <laughs> 20 plus. Huh? 20 plus. <laughs> no, no, she said only 22. I thought it might be 32 or 42 looking at her. <laughs> Praise God. No, we, we all get younger in the world, right? Uh, all the ladies are only there in the panel. What to do? My brother Jude was there. That also you threw him out. <laughs> no. He's there. Brother Jude is there. So, tell me more. So, tell me about your baby. Yes. Uh, so, Giselle, um, you know... Uh, when I got into the word, when, you know, I got the taste, uh, taste and see how good the Lord is. Yes. So when I got to know the taste and, um, you know, uh, Brother Johnson's teaching was going on my TV here. And Giselle is so interested, you know, you know, in her fitness. Mm -hmm. So here yeah, she was putting her laptop with all fitness music. But I said, no matter what. And she's not interested in listening to Brother Johnson. Okay. She's saying, Mama, what is this every time you're putting this? And for me, it was like, it's okay. You put yours, you know. I'm not going to stop this. If you have to listen, listen. But otherwise, you put. So little did I, did I realize later that though she had, because I, I heard Brother Johnson saying, you know, if it's on, the children will definitely hear something. So let it be on. So I kept that in my mind. I said, even if my children are going to, uh, you know, if they're playing and they're doing anything, but for, uh, for sure they're going to listen, something they're going to pick up. So as she was, uh, you know, doing her exercises here, I knew something because as she was, uh, you know, she's done with her fitness, she had something to say from there. I know, Mama, I know, I heard just this. 
I never knew that you were listening because you said that you don't want to listen, right? So little did I know that she was actually those things, you know, was going right into her, but she didn't want to open up and tell me that, uh, you know, that she's listening to the word. So, but what I knew was that uh, uh, she was wanting to know the truth. She wanted to know, Baba, Mama, what is this? What, what is the truth actually? What is Jesus? Who is Jesus? What is the truth? Now, I myself don't know much. I was not, I didn't want to lead her the wrong way. That is why I wanted her to listen to Brother Johnson. But she didn't, she was not interested. But uh, you uh, definitely know Sister Jessie. Then, you yeah, know, that I she went to that, yes, the yeah, new age the new, thing and all of that. She was doing a lot of research it was and all so, that. Yeah, it was, you know, it was so frightening. One day, she came to me as I was sitting on the sofa. Um, she came to me and she said, uh, she touched me. She said, Mama, are you real? And I'm like, real? Now I am gone deep to think, what does she mean? Mama, are you real? Again, she's touching me. I said, what do you mean real? This is your mama. And what do you mean real? Mama, sometimes these thoughts come to me. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know what to do, you know, until uh, then, um, you know, um, we, during this time, we were into some uh, prayer groups where uh, this brother, uh, you know, prayed once and, uh, but still, you know, things did not work later. I still felt con- mm-hmm. she was the same. We didn't know that we have to continue into the word and the word would set up free. So mm-hmm. then what I realized was, then when once she got into the word and everything as you, as you, as you, uh, you know, listen to the word of God, you don't have to do anything because Jesus is going to do everything, but Jesus is the word. So all the evil, what she was thinking, it just vanished. It just vanished. And mm-hmm. today, I am feeling so proud as a mother that, you know, I did not force on her all that. But I said, Jesus, I don't want to force this child. But I know children are taught of the Lord. So, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, and okay, before that, um, my husband, as I, you know, before... Not so interested, but okay, listening. Then he's listening to his whatever he has to listen after coming from work. But later on, he got it that interest, you know. What is she listening every day? Brother Johnson, Brother Johnson. So now Brother Johnson also became his fan. So every day he's leaving out to work. It's Brother Johnson, you know, plugging in, in and out. Yeah. So, and then what happened was he knew everything, uh, the teaching. So now the time came, he wanted to, uh, he was saying, because my children... Uh, Giselle, myself, we were praying in tongues, except my husband. Now he wanted to, you know, pray in tongues. So I started forwarding him the, uh, you know, the teachings, uh, the mm-hmm. videos, teachings of uh, praying in tongues. And and he was, you know, really st- struggling actually to pray in tongues. That's what I've seen. <laughs> but I said, you know, he, every time we were praying in tongues, hallelujah, 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 continuously saying hallelujah. Okay. I know mm-hmm. that's, you know. But I was like, uh, listen to it more. So day and night, day and night, he wants to know about the activation of tongues. And the day he uh, started praying in tongues, I was like, praise God. You know, it was it was something like, you know, for me, there was one person who did not have tongues. The whole mm-hmm. family is praying in <laughs> tongues now. And it was something so different, so amazing. Like, you know, you found a treasure in your home. Mm-hmm. You know, everything is so complete. And uh, so that was about my husband. And then now she's, uh, now she's, uh, she's in the university in Czech. She has caught hold of um, the sword and the seed. You know, it's 11 hours uh, yes. CD. Yes. She's come. I've just begun, um, you, know, you know, parts by parts. I'm listening and I'm making mm-hmm. notes. Whereas mm-hmm. she says, Mama, I've already completed. And I'm listening. It's not the first time for me. Wow. It's again and again. So whenever she calls, it's like she is sharing her revelations. Mm. Mama, this is how it works. This is how it works. This is the word, Mama. You just have to, you know, be into the word uh, and just resist the devil. He is a liar. You, mama, once you feed on, you know, when you feed your spirit, and the spirit is strong, that's it, Mama. You just have to renew your mind. And every day, it's like she teaching me more and more. So it's like word, <laughs> word, word. So it's like, you know, my husband comes. He's heard one teaching from Brother Johnson. I've heard some, I will be listening to something like last past three, four days. I've been listening about confidence. 
He's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, teaching on confidence. So that's helping me more. So I'm sharing uh, confidence. Giselle is telling me more about Soar and Seed than Florida's teaching that day. She said, Mama, you listen to fig tree. Listen to the fig tree mm-hmm. now. So, you know, so I <laughs> complete that and I have to, I'm more, uh, you know, want to listen to more. You know, yeah. what's happening there? So what's this? So it's like the life is just so different being into the word. And moreover, mm-hmm. you just want to grab somebody and share the word. Yeah. You know, you don't leave that opportunity. Like the other day, uh, you know, one of uh, my husband's friend and uh, he uh, he's uh, waiting for his appointment letter to come uh, from Dubai company and he's in Chennai. So uh, he said to me that, you know, we'll pray. I said, uh, fine, we'll send the word and, you know, ask him to confess it mm-hmm. uh, this number of times, two, three rosaries, you know, because he's not into the word. And uh, then after that, I told him, listen, don't leave this person, you know, you need to ask him that, can he give us some time to share the word? So we were waiting for this answer. Then the person writes back to us. Yes, he's interested then, you know, and then you're like, you know, full on to share the mm-hmm. word of God, yeah. what God has done for you, yeah. your testimonies, how, yeah. you know, other people have got jobs through the word of God and how the word of God is so important and the word sets you free. You don't have to doubt, but just hold on to the word, no matter what you see. And just don't go with the sense knowledge and just don't listen. Like, don't go with the sense knowledge, you know? Yes. So um, it was like, you know, um, on the Zoom, me at home, he's in Chennai. My, my husband is at work. So the Zoom session is going on. And uh, yeah, he's, he wants to know more and more and more. You know how it is like you are so hungry for the word of God. You know, when you, once you get it, you want to know more and more. Yes. So then uh, once everything was done and he realized, you know, he changed, he realized where was this mistake going on and why things were not working with him. And then uh, the message, what he wrote to us, this, the cloud of uncertainty, which was there is mm-hmm. now no more. And praise now God. I know how I have to pray in the word. So, so praise God, all glory praise to God. God. You know, it was, Amen. you feel, you know, that happiness you can't describe. Yeah. Joy. It's a that joy. joy. That joy you get, it just can't, you, you are so happy for this person who is now understanding, you know, the word. So, yes. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Wow. wow. Giselle is teaching you every day. Your whole family is in the word. And I remember your husband, brother Ivan, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Initially, he was even asking for notes. So, you know, I could see the, the thirst is there. Yes, yes. The thirst and the hunger for the word. Yes. And, uh, wow. And, uh, Wonderful. And, you know, um, when, you, when you come, when you, when you know, when you're sharing the word and, uh, you know, when you understand the principles, mm-hmm. you know, like the other, other testimony, <laughs> my daughter... Uh, she had, uh, you know, online classes. So mm-hmm. the teachers had selected them, few of the students, like, you know, five, six of them to have the thought for the day every day. Okay. They mm-hmm. had to do this recording. And uh, the group is on my phone. So the mm-hmm. teacher said the selection is done. And the person who was in charge, uh, when my daughter had written to her, she said, no, teachers have already closed this thing. And the, only these children are selected. But when she came to me and she told me, Mama, I cannot now because teacher will not take. You know, the first thing I said, do you know our God is God of impossibilities? Then she said, yeah. she said, yes. Then I said, you know what? The teacher has already selected you. Do you believe that? Because God can do things in your favor. He can turn things in your favor. Yes. And and then I told her, you hold on to Luke 4, 18. Mm-hmm. And you, uh, you know, pray the spirit of the Lord is upon my teacher. And she's, uh, the favor of God is upon me. And uh, uh, thank you, Lord. I have the spirit of excellence. The spirit of academic anointing is upon me. Thank you, Lord. Mm-hmm. And keep thanking the Lord. And I wrote her a short prayer. And I gave her Daniel 120 with the prayer. And I said, before you sleep, you just keep on saying this. Do not doubt because you know that our God is a God of impossibilities. He can turn things around for you, right? She said, yes, Mama, and she went. Amen. Next morning, she comes and she says, Mama, you know what? I said, I know. 
I said, teacher, I selected you, right? She said, yeah, how do you know? I said, that's what Jesus does. That's, this is that's what Jesus does. Yes. And she yes. was like, mama, I mean, it's, mama, it's so, you know, mama, I'm so happy. I said, this is what Jesus does every time. Teacher can see, say yeah. anything, but don't believe what you see. You just call in your desires what you want. That's what brother uh, yes, Papa is teaching, yes. you know. Uh, yeah, you know, I yeah. asked my daughter, this is what Papa is teaching, right? Yes, calling your desires. Yeah. So for her, it was like, Mama, can this happen? I said, yes. Just believe it's done. So it was, for her, it was like, yes, Mama, now I know. You know, this <laughs> is how... Yes, yes so I, I can hear the joy in her voice every time she comes and share her testimony. You know, there's joy in her voice. And, and I'm, I'm actually curious to know, how did your husband, uh, how did he activate the tongues? Because you said, you know, the whole family, uh, you and your three daughters. I know you've yes. got very young daughter, right? The yes, third, yes. The third child? First, Giselle is year 19, then the other one is uh, 13. The youngest one is 8 years. Yeah, so all three plus you, you know, you've got, you, you, all of you can speak in tongues, but, you know, yes. your husband has not activated. So yes. how, did, how did that happen? Uh, I'm actually curious to know. See, if you ask me how did it happen, that is all the work of the Holy Spirit, right? He mm -hmm. was only, he did not give up. He was listening to the teachings of, um, you know, praying in tongues, Brother Johnson's. I forwarded him. I said, listen to everything. You don't have to uh, do anything. Just activate. He, he didn't ask you to pray over or anything? Nothing. Like nothing. Nothing. And it just happened. And I did not tell him anything. I said, you just listen. Mm -hmm. You just listen because, you know, we didn't yeah. have to do... No, you don't have to do any hard work on that. Yes. You have it. You just activate. Yes. So, so it just one day, he just got it. One day when we are praying, we're thanking the Lord and we're praying in tongues uh, mm -hmm. and joining and I'm looking at him you know for me it Praise was like god. oh my god, <laughs> <Praise God. god. <laughs> oh Giselle Giselle has come I'm gonna make her co-host she, oh. where she heard oh, okay she's tuning in from Czech hang on okay. yeah I'm yeah, making her a co-host then I'm sure sister Jessie then I'll have to stop because she'll have a lot more 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 to share no, she'll have okay. a lot more to share she no, 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 Jesse. I'm the one who invited her on this panel. Oh, the mother daughter. Cool. Let's let's have a good fight, mother daughter fight. Uh, Papa, what, what is the age? Is okay, right? Because I don't really know. No, no, no. The age is she's about nineteen. Ah, okay. Only, okay, only, so. only the baby can't come on the screen. Okay, okay, okay. So right. Giselle can come surely. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Giselle. Hi, Giselle. Please, Giselle. Please, Giselle. Please, please God, sister. I'm great. Nice I'm blessed. You. blessed. Oh. Is that your mom? <laughs> oh, hello, mama. <laughs> did, you, did you know this was a surprise for you? <laughs> mama. Oh, please, your God. Your mama has been talking about you. Okay. <laughs> Praising the Lord for you. Oh, please God, please and that God. you have been teaching so, so her the How is your life? Today is Sunday special. Amen. Okay. Sunday special, yes. mother-daughter special. Oh, wow. Very I soon feel... I'm going to call dad also on the line. <laughs> I feel so blessed. I feel so honored. Yeah, tell me. How's your life, Papa Giselle? A supernatural breakthrough. In two words. Can you, can you speak a little louder, Baba? Brother, can you hear me now? No, no, I can hear you, but you're talking very softly. Oh, okay. Uh, a okay. supernatural breakthrough. Tell me, if you only say one line, what will we know? What is the share, share the word. You're a sword and the seed, Giselle. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I've been chew like, um, the sow and the seed, it's like my... It's like I'm the dog and so and seed is the bone and I'm just chewing and chewing. But the flavor doesn't go. The flavor intensifies every time I chew it. There's just a new um, revelation. Um, brother, like when, when I listen to the so and seed, so I, I listen to it all day. It's like I've listened to it so many times that even before you say the word, I'm lip syncing your next line. It, wow. <laughs> it, 
I uh, if I don't listen to it, I feel restless. But yes, but louder, a little louder. We have to go right inside me. My, okay. My, Would it be better? Preach, preach, preach uh, louder. Talk louder. Okay. Come on. Yeah. Oh, uh, now can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. You can speak a little louder. Okay. Oh, alright. Wait. Now, am I loud enough? Yes. Yes. yes loud and clear. Yeah. Okay. Praise God. So, um, oh, wow, there's so many people, but um, praise God. <laughs> um, um, yeah, the sower and the seed has just changed my life completely. I, just, I get a new revelation every time I listen to it. And um, so recently I asked, I had asked Sister Marina for the audios, the WhatsApp audios for Sow in the Seed so that I don't have to be connected to the Wi-Fi to listen to, to, the, entire, um, to the entire video. And so I've, um, and each audio is in different parts. And so I've labeled each audio for each topic. So whenever I feel like I'm weak in that topic, I listen to that, for example, love and faith. So when I, whenever I feel like my heart is getting hardened, I listen to the topics on love and whenever I feel like um, the enemy is just constantly attacking me and I feel weak in my spirit then I listen to faith and um, yeah brother you ask me questions and I um, yeah. what is the breakthrough you are talking about what was the battle that you were going through something that you were going through and you got a breakthrough definitely um de I will, so there are, there are many things I'd like to speak about, but um definitely love because I feel like my heart was hardened before I would only think of myself. And um one day I just I just felt weak in the spirit. I said, Lord, I'm not doing anything wrong. I have faith, I have faith in you. I know that you've done it. That's not an issue, but I feel like something's missing. And I feel like I'm weak in something. I can't, pin, I can't pinpoint what it is. And I'm seeing the scriptures. I'm, I'm trying to have faith, but it's, it's not working. But that's when I knew that something was wrong. And that's when the Holy Spirit told me that it is love. So the God kind of a copy love that I wasn't operating in. So faith... It, it, obviously faith is so important but it's mentioned in it's written in Galatians that faith works through love so love is love is higher love is greater than faith and one more thing I learned um, one, one more thing one more important principle like, uh, one more thing that I registered in my heart is that you're you are known as a Christian by the life you live. So you can't just say that you love someone and, um, and that's it. You show love through your deeds and actions, not only through your words. So, and agape kind of love is you give out your love without expecting anything in return. So I used to be like, my um, my thought process used to be like this before. I'm just going to be open about it. It was a very give and take policy, a very did for that policy. Okay, this person didn't do this for me, so why should I? So I, I used to think like that before. But now when I learned about what makes God's love different and what... um like what God's love really is, how it's different from human love. I've been, I, I, so I couldn't do it with my own strength. So I asked the Holy Spirit, by the way, Holy Spirit is my best friend now. Anything I do, anything I'm like, Holy Spirit, it's you and me working together. I, I need you, I need you. Like we were just holding, we were just hand in hand all the time. And then one day I just cried out. And so the day when I felt weak in my spirit, I just cried out and I wrote to mama and dada that, I, I need to I need to soften yeah. my heart, and um, I so that was the day when I told 
Yeah, that was um, that was the day when the Holy Spirit told me that I lacked love, and so every morning I read the daily gospel, the daily word, and that day itself, the gospel was. I know Holy Spirit led me through the gospel. The gospel was whatever you do to your brothers and sisters, that you do to me, and that just opened my eyes. That just opened my heart. I said, Lord. and even today's gospel even today's uh, gospel jesus mentions that on the day when everyone will rise up from the dead his the sheep will be on his right side and the goat will be on his left side and um jesus was praising the sheep because he said that they fed him when he was hungry they gave him water when he was thirsty they visited when he was in prison and then the the sheep asked him lord but we never fed you when you were hungry we never clothed you when you were naked and we never visited you when you, when you were in prison and then the lord said whatever you did to your brothers and sisters or not you're doing it to me and that message has really entered my heart and that that's how i want to live my life so love is so important i didn't know the importance of love before before i just thought that your relationship with god is having trust in him having faith in him but faith works through love and that is so it's so important to know and before it was hard it was definitely hard to um work in love because the way our human minds think it's like um whatever you do you expect it in return but then i realized that if you feel confident with love you feel you you feel better and you might think that you're going low but god brings you so high so high and that's the power of love you just feel confident i i um from from my experience whenever i don't operate in love i don't feel confident i feel i feel very weak in spirit i feel like i can't face anyone i can't look at anyone in the eye and i didn't know that it was the love factor but after listening to so in the seed especially when brother johnson mentioned his experience about how love changed his life operating in love changed his life like it, it doesn't matter like um you might think that you're operating in faith and that's all you need because you don't do anything wrong you don't commit any big sin but any petty thing means you're not operating in a gapi love when you're not operating in a gapi love that's when the strife begins and the devil likes to bring strife between relationship because between the people you're most close to and it all starts with a petty thing it doesn't have to be the biggest fight the biggest fight starts with the most petty with the pettiest thing so when you okay so um recently like whenever i have been having negative emotions so whenever i used to have negative emotions in the past i would i would act it out i would either be really sad or like it would show it would show on my surface but now it's just better to shut up just meditate on the scripture and shut up don't because a negative emotion will always lead to a negative action that is so important to remember and um yeah love is love is so important and with love and when you work with patience or while operating in agape love you get so when you work with um love and have faith in god you get patience on the way so patience is the gift that comes on the way so yeah that's so so kisa can you hear me Yes, brother. So that means um, love is not just a feeling; it is something that you do. As you yes. say, when I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. Yes. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was sick, you visited me. Yeah, you served me. Yes. So, so now love is not what you say. I love you. but you are actually doing something to 
bring a change in somebody's life yes so don't you think that when you are doing something is actually you are deciding what you are going to be experiencing in the future yes definitely because whatever you do right now however you operate right now whichever so you can either operate in the spirit of faith and love or the spirit of fear it's either the work of god or the work of the enemy whatever you do right now something's happening in the spiritual realm so whatever you're doing on earth right now whatever word is speaking out right now because the tongue has a power of life and death and whatever you want to see whatever you speak right now is manifesting in the spiritual realm so always pay attention to your words so whatever you speak right now from your heart when you operate in love that's manifested so if you operate in love and you don't get that in return you just just endure with love that's the that's a copy of love and when when you do this and even if you don't see any change um like there's an example of david like how he tapped the blessings how he it like you just tap the you just tap the anointing of the other person but but it's not it's it's you don't operate in love with that intention but 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 that's just god's nature that's it. hence there's this him the we, uh, we are called christians by our love it's not just a him it's a it's a truth we walk with so each you, other you are trying to say you are trying to say when saul was jealous of david yes david could have killed saul Yes. A David out of love spared his life. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. That. But Paul's jealousy not only killed him, it wiped out his whole family. Yes. So in other words, whatever I am emotionally feeling that I put into action and that is actually preparing what I'm going to experience in the future. Yes. Exactly. so i can decide what i want to experience yes so like you just said agape love is when i was hungry you gave me to eat that's a good definition i love it hey baby you gave a very deep definition of agape love is when i was hungry you gave me to eat when i was thirsty you gave me to drink when i was naked you clothed me when i was in the prison you visited me when i was sick you served me and when i was homeless you gave me to live to stay and uh, when a person starts practicing this kind of love he begins to experience jesus extremely intimate extremely close amen that's so true and you just so now, bubble, bubble with joy you just like so, you just bubble like that yeah yeah so so now that you are going now you are going on there to another country to study medicine and you are going to be a doctor very soon so what is your intention of being a doctor make lot of money i if you want mm. i can help you in your finances to go <laughs> the <laughs> this is yeah, because, because you 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 will go get lot of money because you are in dubai you just go for a check and come back uh, so many dirams man just to touch a person's body <laughs> so so you so you're going to make lot of money jisal if you want i will be okay i will be looking after your finances <laughs> being um being a doctor this um this is a voc- this is a vocation it's not a profession it's not it's not a, it's not a profession where you will retire like for that's why it's not a profession it's a way of life usually when you work when you start your career and then you end your career and then you retire and then you if you do a government job you live on pension but this is there's no retiring age it's a commitment wow and, um 
Giselle, Giselle, I love you. God. And that, that, um, that, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Tell me more. If you um, okay, and okay, this this is this is what I think. Okay, a lot. Um, it's very common to hear that um, medicine, med school is hard and everything like that. But you, but when that's why that's why joy comes into place. You know what you you know um you know the end result. You know how much of a you know that you're going to save so many people from grief, and I take pride in saying that that I can do it with Jesus's love and Jesus's power. Okay, in addition to the normal medicine, if I can spread the word and um, make someone realize that they are not stuck in their situation, I, I mean, there's nothing greater than that because I think when, uh, when anyone's going through something, the biggest block that is in their mind is that they're stuck in this situation and that everything's going to end. And it's so important to know that you speak what you want to see because God called the things that were not seen. For example, Abraham. When um, he, he, had the, he had the joy that he was getting a son even before he got even even before Isaac was born. So, and um, God said that he will have, even before Abraham had a son, God said that he will have children as many as the stars in the sky. And uh, he didn't, and God didn't say that after he had children. He said that before he had children. And that is the same God we serve because God was the same yesterday, today, and forever. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will be the same. Our God is the same, the, God, the same God that told Abraham that he will have as many children as the stars in the sky is the same God we serve today. So you are not stuck in your situation. You speak what you want to see. And that is a verse I forgot though. Romans 4, um, 417. 417, yes. Romans 4.17. Yes. It is written. That means it is a truth. It's not just my thoughts. It's not just anyone's thoughts. It is a truth. Because the truth, because the word was made flesh. The word is flesh. God is the word. Who is God? God is the word. If we can... Uh, if we can believe anyone on earth when they say that they, pr they promise you with something, if you can believe them, how can you not believe God? That every scripture is the written word. However, if you want his word to manifest in your life, you need to believe. You need to have faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing, and that's why renewing your mind is so important. If you want, God, okay, so that's why we have the free will. We know God's promises for us, and Satan's promises are the opposite of God's promises. And you think that Satan's plan is coming to pass when all these negative thoughts attack your mind, and you think that is real. Now, when you believe that that is real, and when you when you speak what you believe, suppose you're thinking in a, a negative emotion, but suppose you're feeling something negative, you're thinking negative thoughts, okay? And you don't discern that these are just the lies of the enemy and you will speak it out, then you have activated a very powerful weapon in a, in a very deadly way. That is, you're believing the fear in your heart because fear is a spirit, faith is a spirit, when you believe in the fear in your heart and then you confess it. Now, believing in your heart and confessing with your tongue, this is, a, this is a principle which can be applied in both cases, faith and fear. Now, when you believe the fear in your heart 
and confess it with your tongue, it is sure that the enemy's plan will come to pass because you've just activated a very powerful weapon. But if you do not believe the lies of the enemy by battling with the scriptures, because even um, Jesus came on earth as a man, as a normal man, but with the spirit of God. So if you come on earth as a man, as, as a human, you'll be attacked by the enemy. And he was also attacked by the enemy by, um, uh, on why he was fasting. The enemy told Jesus to turn the stone into bread. But how, So that is a very beautiful example of how we should battle with, uh, we, how we should battle when the enemy attacks our mind. That is a perfect example. Jesus battled with the scriptures. He said, I, I don't remember the scripture which he battled. Man but, does not bread. Man yeah, does not he, eat my bread. Yeah, that, Matthew uh, Fofo. Right. Matthew 4-4. Four, four. So, it is, it is he said that it, he yes, said it is written. It's written. He said it is written and he went to the written word. Okay. Yes, so he said that it is written that man doesn't live by bread alone. So if you so when you that believe, okay, so Matthew 4, 4. So he believed in his heart and confessed with his tongue. It's the same principle. And when you use the principle using the word of God, it is sure, it is sure that God's plan will come to pass. Now, whatever principle you use, that's where free will comes into picture. Now, you want God's plan to come to pass because he gave us life, life in abundance. And we're just here to claim it. We're just here to believe it. We're not here to believe the lies of the enemy. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourself to the Lord. Resist the devil and the devil will flee from you. Yes, amen. So we are given the weapon the, the devil was already defeated on the cross. But you know, he's like that um, annoying annoying thing who just pokes a stick like this and like this. But when you say when you say the scripture with faith and confidence in the Lord and confess it with your tongue, so that when you confess it with your tongue, it just blows him off away. So that's how he just flees from you. He is, he trembles when someone confesses a scripture with belief in the heart. So you are not stuck in your situation. And um, when you're getting closer to your blessing, the pressure will be really high. It will be really high. So when the pressure is high, he keeps putting thoughts in your mind. He'll either attack you by saying, by reminding you things, of, things in the past. But things in the past are when you were unrenewed. When you, and okay, even if you were in the garden, even, um, even if you were born again and it is a, a, a part of your past and something didn't go as well, you are higher than what you were. You were better than what you were and you're not finished yet. You're still, you're still, your God is just taking you higher. It's like this escalator that's going high. And when we, have, when our purpose is done on this earth and God takes our spirit and soul away, he will complete the rest. But till then, we're only getting higher. So, but the enemy will attack you by reminding you of your past. He will attack you by making you doubt yourself. He will attack you by putting you into guilt. These are just lies of the enemy. Guilt is such a big, it, 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 it's such a big tool that he uses. Doubt is such a big tool that he uses. And when the pressure is high, I've experienced this. I get really confused. I just don't know what to do. It's like all the scriptures just float in my head. I'm just like, oh, now what scripture do I use? Just use one weapon and contemplate on it. 
it doesn't matter if you know the whole bible by heart and it, it's not in your heart it, it doesn't matter if you know all the scriptures and you don't know what it means because when you believe when you believe and confess that's a different power that's when the power is just soaring so when the enemy attacks you just say um um what john 8 4 4 john yeah, john john, john 8 4 4 when the when he speak when he moves his mouth he speaks his native language the father the devil is the father of lies you need to know that he's a liar he's a liar and that god is the only truth don't believe his lies and greater is the spirit of god that is in you than the one that is in the world who is who is in the world the liar you're not here to believe his lies and um okay you might be saying that you're seeing your you're seeing the scriptures you're believing in your heart but nothing is happening around you patience if god says he'll do it he he's already done it you don't have to be like lord i'm waiting i'm keeping a countdown for you no if he said it's done it's done it's done and when it comes it will come in abundance because when god blesses he blesses you more than you could ever think or imagine because his ways are not our ways and his yes, thoughts sir. are not our thoughts yes sir yes brother when god blesses you just three months back did you ever think that you oh would my gosh three months back what was your condition <laughs> i was in bondage hey, okay so three months back um at in around may in june whenever the enemy would attack my mind i would believe those lies and not only would i believe those lies i would contemplate on those lies because i would i would go inside and just think and you know how everyone says that okay I'm, yeah i overthink and that's how um, that's how i just overthink you might think that you're overthinking but what you're doing you're just contemplating on the devil's lies and then when you contemplate it enters your heart and what enters your heart will eventually come out and that's what i was doing and it was seen that was coming to us before yeah we had to listen before <laughs> I, i i would tell i would tell mama and dada what can i do i don't so so were you going through pain at that time with the lies of the devil i felt like i was being tortured it was so bad i thought i would never come out it was so bad i would cry every day i would weep every day so so you were in pain yes but did you not understand that in that pain god still had a beautiful plan for you wow you know in moments of pain when the devil is saying checkmate okay at that time god must be smiling and saying listen devil you are hijacked her and you are thinking you hijacked her away from the mother away from the father away from the family and now she's all alone i got her in a desert and i'm going to torture her that's when suddenly you find the door has opened and the pilot has been kicked out of the window and a new person has come and saying Hi Gisel it's me Jesus oh, Wow And now when he entered into the cockpit and you are his co-pilot is saying come on Gisel shall we take a U turn and Gisel is saying yes lord and you are crying and he is saying okay Gisel I want you to do step number 1 just believe my written word don't go around searching for google search oh 
that Google search can take you on a trip where there is no return. So get into the word and I'll give you a CD sore in the sea and just suck every juice you can. And there comes the devil from the window still outside. Okay. Tapping on the window and saying, darling, don't you remember me? Please get me in. Please get me in. And you open your mouth and you're speaking the truth. And bang, he's gone again. After some time, he comes again. And this time you're learning more and more from the sower and the seed. And now you're enjoying the game. The enemy is coming back. And you're saying, when he comes back, I got this truth. I got this one. And I got this one. And when he comes, you open your mouth and you start speaking the truth. And bang, he's gone again. And you're looking to Jesus and Jesus is smiling and saying, that's what you do, Gisel. I'm going to teach you. You open your mouth and you bash him up. I'm not going to bash him up. I'm going to teach you. So now the journey has begun. You begin to bash up, bash up, bash up, bash and bash. Now, as you're bashing and you are getting your victory, Jesus is not going to leave you there. He's going to tell you now, Gisel, I want you to search somebody in your group who is being troubled by the same devil. Okay. So I'm going to expose that person to you in pain. And when you look at that person's pain, you will remember your past. And just as I introduce myself to you, now you introduce me to that person. Okay. And now Jesus is no longer a drawing or a picture. Is a person whom you know through his word. And now you start speaking to the other person. And the person is saying, he said, how do you know all this? Listen, I was also kidnapped like you. The devil fooled me. I was in the same trip. And I thought it would be beautiful. And there the journey was so much torturing. And Jesus somehow showed up. And I have come to to tell you that same Jesus wants to visit you. Can you hold my hand and I can introduce you to Jesus. And you start teaching somebody that somebody said, he said, you don't even look like my friend, man. You look like my mother. You are my mother. You are my father. I'll tell you what you're talking. Something is happening inside of me. I'm getting some freedom. Oh yeah, I know that. Because I also got the same freedom. Is that a little bit right? What I yeah. shared with you. So true. So true. Because I was on a flight. And the devil had captivated me. He took away my memory. He took away everything. And now I was a foolish man. Not knowing my name. Not knowing anything. And I did not even know where I was going. And everything was torture and torture and torture. And suddenly... The cockpit door opened and the devil was kicked out and Jesus walked in and the gospel was preached to me. Amen. The gospel was preached to me. The word of the Lord became my Jesus. Praise God. And I did not know at that time the word of God solved my problem. And the Lord said, can you use the same word of God and solve somebody's problem? So I went about solving somebody else's problem with the same truth that I had learned. Mm. I did not know. Yeah. The secret is, the more and more I solved their problem using the word of God, I shield myself for bigger rewards. Wow. So every, listen, listen. Every day I am solving people's problem using the truth. And every day, reward after reward is being scheduled on my track. So every day I'm looking at new reward and I'm saying, wow, wow, wow. Amen. Did you get that? Just one minute. Hello?
Yes. So, I have seen so many rewards. What about you? Of every direction I turn, I'm only seeing God's blessings. A downpour, a flood. Shh, don't tell anybody. Secret. That's the, that's the secret. The mystery of faith. The, oh my gosh. Brother, this is... The sow and the seed is the mystery of faith. It's It's unlocked. During Mass, every time I hear, I hear the priest saying, and this is the mystery of faith. And then after, um, and, and then after getting to the word, uh, by God's grace, I was blessed to attend, to have the opportunity to go for Mass even then. And then I heard the priest say, so this is the mystery of faith. That's when I was like, oh, unlocking the Bible? Unlocking? Ah, mystery of faith got unlocked. And when you unlock cracking the, the code. Yes. Cracking the code. And when you crack the code, you are seeing reward after reward. What was a torment has been replaced by reward. Exactly. And so how so how do you schedule your reward? Search for people with problem, go and solve their problem using the truth. <laughs> By the time you come back, you are scheduled for your reward. Wow. Look at mom, she is totally totally caught frozen. <laughs> look at your mom's please look at your mom. Yeah, yeah. The best thing is only you and I can hear. Nobody can hear the secret. Yeah, no one can, no one else can hear. Papa, we can all hear the secret. <laughs> <laughs> now we know all the secrets now. Isn't it true, Gisel? Yes, brother, definitely. In these two months, you would have solved somebody's problem because if you can't solve anybody's problem, you cannot speak. It is impossible. It is impossible that you are studying the word and you are not going to solve somebody's problem. It is impossible. Because so many to share. <laughs> because if you are studying the word of God and you are practicing on your life, it is is impossible for you to shut your mouth and go and sleep under a blanket. Impossible. Yes. Oh, can, yes. cannot be put under a bushel. Impossible! Yes, because you just talk, you talk it in the scripture. Your, your language is, now my daily language has been converted to the scriptures without even realizing. So, I, tell, me, so tell me at least one, one, one problem that you solved. And no, no names, no names, A, B, C, so that no identity is kept. Oh, okay. Don't take the name, but then about the uh, Diwali party, you know, Giselle, that you shared. Oh, okay. Um, no names. Yeah, so... Um... No detail, Mr. A, Mr. B, or Miss A, Miss B, like that. No, no names, no location, nothing. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, all right. So whenever there's, whenever there's, when um, people work through anger, you should never believe what they say when they're angry. Say that again. When people work through anger, never believe what they say because that is not them. It is a spirit. It is one of the dark forces of the devil. Because God created us with love. God is love. And God created us with love. And so all his creations are love. And so anything that isn't love isn't from God. So if someone is angry, you need to know that they're weak in the spirit. You need to be understanding from your part that they are weak in the spirit. And so you just have to rebuke the spirit and fill them with the love of Jesus because they need that love. Only with that love can they feel strengthened. 
because when um when you're going through a lot of things you you feel like you need you need someone's hug and through that hug you feel the love and only that gives you strength so so it doesn't mean you're not only weak in the spirit when you're sad you're weak in the spirit when you're feeling all of the um all of the forces of the devil like guilt when you uh, when you're reminded of the past doubt you need the strength then and this can only be given by the love of jesus because his love is unconditional so so um there was there was a situation and i had rebuked it rebuked um all the spirits of infirmity spirits of anger because i know because i knew that this is mm, this is not how god created us this 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 anger is not how god created us and so when you when when you rebuke and when when you um confess that jesus' love is perfect love and perfect love casts out all evil just contemplate and think uh, just think of the scripture just meditate on the scripture perfect love casts out all evil is there anything wrong with it how can you even um how can you even point out anything wrong with it because i feel this is the scripture that that solves every problem every problem it doesn't have to be um okay so evil doesn't have to be anger it doesn't have to be anything typical you think of it it's just in small things suppose you're at your office job or you're studying something in um you're studying something or you're at your office job and you and you're assigned something that you don't like to do okay because this when you think that you don't like to do something that is also kind of that's also a form of bondage because we are created to love and we are created with love so when you don't like something and that, i mean that's not love so when you start confessing when you rebuke that spirit of rebellion and you just have to rebuke once okay you just have to um rebuke once and when you take out the junk so for example when when there's um when there's garbage in your house the trash in your house you throw it out once so you throw i mean in a day you throw it out once so you remove the junk out once and you keep filling it with good things you keep filling it with the love of jesus so yeah um yeah so so oh, sorry i i i can't help it but when you don't like to do something you can you can you can learn to love something you can learn to love something and you can do that by confessing the scriptures and believing it in your heart by saying so suppose you're in charge of um hr um so you you suppose you so you're um, in charge of certain files and you don't like to do those files in that particular job and whenever you think of doing that job you just despise it but you're not stuck in you need to you're not stuck in that situation the scriptures are applicable in if in even the pettiest thing it doesn't have to be a big scenario to apply a scripture it's just small small things in your life which can create bigger godly changes so you, suppose you don't like doing um some filing job confess with your tongue and believe in your heart i love doing filing job i'm not going to believe the lies of the enemy because he only tries to bring strife so things like that in in short love is the answer to everything you do everything with love perfect love casts out evil
Wonderful. So, so you are in a factory going through a training and when you trust love, then peace is guaranteed in this life factory. Definitely. Sound mind. Yes. Your mind is sound. Definitely. And, and, and you have no fear. No fear. And feel more powerful. You know what happened just now? I was holding my mobile for such a long time. So I saw the mobile stand and I put it there. And the hook went and clicked on the power switch and my mobile went off. Now, was that my intention? No. No. But it happened. Now, when it happened, I lost the best part, what you were explaining. When somebody is angry, don't believe what they are saying because those words are not the person's words. They are from the kingdom of darkness yes. and the power went off. And I said, I oh. missed it. Then I thought to myself, I can definitely ask her for the revision. What I missed it. Double power. Oh, he, he didn't know. So power. when you are going to give me the revision now, it is only because it is very important and I want to hear it. Amen. The devil might think that it's a setback, but God brings a comeback for every setback. A, a greater comeback for every setback. Okay. So, um, whenever someone's angry or someone's annoyed, never take... Okay, so the main, um, the main thing you shouldn't do is take offense. Because... Um, when you take offense, then the negative, uh, um, um, the negative emotion will build in your heart, and whatever's in your heart will eventually come out. It's it's a formula. Take offense, it deposited in your heart, builds up, comes out. So, don't take offense because that's not how God created that person. God created that person with love. So the only way, the natural way in which that person works is with love. So if that person speaks out of anger, it is not the words of that person. It's just the enemy working through that person. But you have to do one thing. Do not take offense. Be a dead dog. Be a dead dog. Do not react. Can I say do not take offense means, is it your decision that no matter what happens, I'm not going to focus on the lie of the devil, but I will deliberately, intentionally focus on the truth. Yes. Okay. You can only, okay. you, you can only not take offense by meditating on the word. Now, don't take 10 scriptures. Just take one scripture, meditate on it, and contemplate on it and understand it. Because when you understand it, it enters your heart. When it enters your heart, even that will come out. And whatever comes out sets you free. So take one scripture. John 4.4 4, Greater is the spirit of God that is in you. Greater is the spirit of God. That means the same spirit that was in Jesus lives in you because only his spirit can be transferred to different people. We, if we take our spirit and give it to someone else, then we are dead. We are gone. Gone case. But Jesus has transferred his spirit to us. And what is his spirit? Love, power, and of a sound mind. That is who you are. So if you are that, you better act it out. How do you act it out? By contemplating on it. Because when it builds up and builds up and builds up, it comes out. So if the same fear can build up and build up and come out and result in something negative and 
lead to dis, uh, destruction why do you want to cause that instead why 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 um if god has given you such beautiful promises why don't you just go and claim them you're here and claim them it's good for you itself right don't claim the lies of the devil claim the truths of god so greater that reminds spirit. me of uh, jezel galatians 6 9 let us not be weary in doing good for at the right season we will reap if we do not lose heart amen exactly whatever you whatever yeah. you sow you will reap yeah either brother galatians 6 9 that reminded me of let us not stop in doing good let us not be weary in doing good for at the proper season we will reap if we do not lose heart papa Chizel is training to be a doctor to heal people physically. And she's also training to heal people's hearts in the way she's sharing. So amazing, amazing. She's not only healing people physically, she's healing them emotionally. She's healing them spiritually. She's, she's just, with the word of God, she's healing them all around. In the name of Jesus. And, she's 19. and amen. Marina, she's 19. Yes, yes, I know, Papa. I know I, what she's... So I- I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking at 19, I, 19, I was doing gang fights. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at her and saying, Lord, here is a baby 19 who is talking wisdom of 60. Okay. And here I was 19 and causing fights and causing trouble to people. But remember, Papa... So, 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 Gizel, when you say you should not take anger, uh, when a person is angry, do not take what they are saying because those words are coming from the kingdom of darkness. Yes. So, let's say I and you are having a relationship and I am angry with you. And I am saying some very, very painful words to you. If you take those words, which are high loaded voltage words of poison and destruction, and if you accept them, there will be two things that will happen. One, these words will destroy your dreams. Or these words will take you away from those dreams. Think about it. Yes, words are weapons. If you accept them. If you accept but, them. But I'm when I'm them. speaking to you, those angry words, and you stop those words with the truth, then that relationship will not be able to destroy your dream. See, for example, Joseph had a dream. I don't know why I'm sharing this with you. Can I share with you secretly? Yes, brother. Or do you want me to share it on this panel? On this panel, so we even top secret. So you don't want me to give you the secret? Let the seeds go to the entire field. More fruit. So Joseph had a dream. But for that dream to be fulfilled, he needs relationship. God cannot fulfill your dream without relationship. And in that relationship, His brothers, because he was talking about his dream, did nasty thing to destroy his dream. But Joseph on the other side, in spite of their bitterness and jealousy and anger, he did not retaliate with them. Neither did he take what they did to him, but he responded with love and forgiveness. And that's why his dream remained intact. 
Yes. So then he went to the Egyptian master's house and there he kept his dream but at the same time he gave his best in the place where he shouldn't have been there but he gave his best. God blessed him for that and God made him a manager. Again, the, the Egyptian master's wife, she had her dream and Joseph was with his dream. Their dreams did not match. So she tried to force him into her dream and Joseph would not agree with the dream because it was not godly dream. So she punished him by telling a lie and telling her husband by which he got angry and he put him in the prison. Now, even though the Potiphar, the Egyptian master would loved Joseph, but what he did to Joseph was not good. But yet, Joseph did not agree to that anger and he was quick to forgive. He did not accept it. So when he refused to accept anger, the dream continued. Yes. Did you see that? Yes. Now he's in the prison, but in the prison he cannot see the dream, but the dream is still in his heart. And as you were saying, what's in your heart is going to come out. Yes. So there inside the dream, inside the prison, he kept his dream, but he gave his best. Again, he helped a prisoner by interpreting his dream. And then he told him his own dream to meet, to talk to the king about his release. Again, the prisoner forgot his dream. And that was painful to Joseph. But again, Joseph did not allow the prisoner's action to get into his heart. So that kept his dream even now intact. Yes. And he kept giving his best in the prison, but with his dream intact. And as you said, very rightly, what is in your heart will one day come out. And now the king had a problem and he could not solve his problem. Mm -hmm. So the prisoner remembered Joseph and spoke to the king. And because Joseph's heart was always not to take anybody's offense or anger or poison, the king called him and Joseph was able to interpret the dream because his heart had no poison. When our heart is full of lies, we begin to hear the voice of the stranger. Mm -hmm. When our heart is full of love, we hear the voice of the good shepherd. Yes. So he heard the voice of God, interpreted the dream and that's how he became the governor. Mm -hmm. What you said is so right and that's why I did not want to miss it. When you said... When a person is angry and he speaks something, please do not accept it because it's from the kingdom of darkness. When he said it, my mobile went off and I said, I am not going to lose this precious treasure that has come out of your mouth and I will not allow it to be lost. That's why I put the mobile on and I came back to where you left. Because that has come from the heart of God. Whenever mm -hmm. somebody speaks something in anger, please do not receive that message. It will be from the kingdom of darkness. Yes. Wow. Giselle. Wow. Brother, so and seed. Wow. So and seed. Wow. <laughs> When somebody is angry with you and speaking the last things to you, remember that whenever someone uh, your video got angry, struck. Yeah, so whenever someone is angry and they speak. Not from them. 
Papaya, voice is breaking. Yeah. We can't hear you. No, Papa, we can't hear you. <laughs> you have to uninstall the Zoom, I think. Breaking. No, it has come. It will come. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, Sister Giselle, what an amazing testimony. Praise it's not God. a testimony, it's more than that. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Sir, this is a teaching. This is not just a testimony. Yes, yes, yes. It's more not a testimony. It's a teaching. It's a teaching and you're teaching us practically what we have to do every day in our relationship. Thank you so much, Giselle, because this is what everybody of us needs in the name of Jesus. Praise, Praise God. Us. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, Papa. Clear. Thank you, Sister. So, so what I want to say is when she said that and I was in the car, when somebody is angry with you, Please do not receive the message that they speak in anger because it's come from the kingdom of darkness. And that's just so true that every relationship will either take you towards your dream or will take you away from them. So when a person is angry and the person is talking to you out of anger, it is not the person but the devil has noticed the potential that is growing and you are pregnant with the dream and he can already witness the formation in the spiritual realm that you are so close to your dream. And he has to give you an abortion. He has to give you a miscarriage. And that is why he has to come up with the message so that it irritates you, it gets you into offense, and when that happens, you, with your own mouth, has forfeited your dream. And that is also a test. That's also a test on how you operate. And every test is a ground for purification. Every test will promote you to a higher level. So but whenever the pressure is high... The only with the proportion of purification. If the yeah. purification is not there in the midst of trial then there is no promotion there is no reward you are mm -hmm. still there because God wants you to first get out of corruption and that getting out of corruption is following the instructions through love Yes. so when love becomes the top priority and you are following the instructions promotion is the reward Yes, guaranteed. You don't sweat to get your promotion. Your reward is the promotion for your purity. Yes. So every time you are in a trial and you take the right step in the right direction, it is a step not only towards promotion, it is a step towards wisdom. It's a step to a championship. It's a step towards transformation. It's a step towards greatness. And that is why in these two months, what has happened, the gazelle in the old video, the past, and the gazelle today in the new video is a day and night difference. There, she has been controlled and tormented by the devil. Here, she's controlled and possessed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. There are decisions are all about how to get stress, how to become a champion to get stress. Here it is, how about to kill the stress from the root, eliminate it completely from the root, and Amen. rise with God to His greatness that He has for you. Amen. So your continual excess, your continual feeding your spirit with the word of God is the seed that has taken you from 
the pit to the excellent position where you're shining in God's glory. Amen. What is the what is the secret? Continual access to the word of God. Of God. Amen. Amen. Today, as we were going by the elevator, it struck my mind is that I have not seen you personally, face to face, physically, but I have visited you most of the time through the word. So the time is coming where God wants to teach people, even though you have not met the person physically, the preacher physically, doesn't matter. But you can meet the Lord spiritually Amen. and experience his touch physically. Amen. By receiving the word might be through a mobile. Yes. So, Giesel, you had your personal thinking and you would not agree with mom. You yes. did not agree with your dad. You did not agree with anybody. I walked by my senses, not by faith. You were agreeing to the opinion of those who were teaching you of the world. Yes, yes. And you agreed with them and you kept them as your celebrity and you were hooked up on that. Like the other day you were saying about the food. But the moment you choose, you change your opinion from their opinion to God's not opinion, truth, your success began to change. So you can be in the world and still have opinion of some of the celebrities of the world and still get lost. Mm -hmm. Yes. Have I become a celebrity in your in your brother? I've been telling everyone I like <laughs> Like I have one close friend, and I keep telling him that Brother Johnson is coming to my house. Brother Johnson is coming, and because I, only your voice and only your more than more than the thoughts I hear in my mind, I can hear your voice throughout the day. Okay, now do you need to be good looking? I've got scars. I've got this. I've got that. I scream, I shriek, but the message is what makes the difference. That has entered my Amen. heart and yes. changed. Yes. So, so, no matter whoever is a celebrity and all that, that doesn't matter. What matters is the message. Amen. So, even though I'm speaking something to you and the message is not right, it can tear you apart, it can take away your success. Mm. so we should not get connected to an identity of a person mm. but we should get connected to the message that is of Jesus Amen. so what you called as a success in your diet and in your food at that time but you were successful in maintaining your figure, but you were not at all successful in your good health because you had a lot of issues. But you were looking slim and trim. But now, when you change your opinion to God's word, you are still slim, but you're extremely healthy. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's very true. So there you are on opinion, here you are on truth. Yes. So the moment your opinion changed to truth, everything in your life began to change. So what you started doing in a small way, but daily, mm -hmm. began to accumulate. Watering the, the seed. The joy, yes. the fun with Jesus the warmth with the Holy Ghost. So what you started doing in a small way, something very, very small. But as you began to do it daily, now you're saying, this is a wow, 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 wow relationship. 
Absolutely. In those days, there was so much of confusion, so much of doubts whether I'm right, he is right, she is right, they are right. Now you are looking at the truth and saying only the truth and the truth and the truth is right all the time. And because the truth is right and you are stuck to the truth, mm -hmm. your future turned from natural to divine. Amen. Mm -hmm. So now you are operating on divine future because now the word who is Jesus is ruling over your heart, ruling over your mind, and even your body now has been, it is you who is giving your body to Jesus and saying, Jesus, I don't even need this body. You can use it the way you want. So now your breath is his, your body is his, your mind is his, your spirit is his, your money is his, your career is his, you are his. So then also I, uh, one, one big, big change that I have experienced is before whenever I would think anything, like if, before if anything uh, would bother me, I would immediately run to mama and dada. I would immediately run to them. But now I'm God dependent. I don't have to confess what's worrying me because if I'm confessing it, I'm just manifesting a thing that I don't want to see. So, uh, so I just tell the Lord, Lord, it's a, it's a, it's a plain, simple, layman's conversation with God. No big, big words. Lord, the enemy is attacking my mind. I need your strength. I cannot do this by myself. And the Holy Spirit comes to rescue. I just have to say that. I don't even tell mama and dada because I'm causing them also worry and then the enemy will attack them also and I'm speaking it out loud and implementing such a powerful weapon but in the wrong kingdom. So I'm like, no, none of that. Not going to activate any of that. Lord, it's only between me and you. Enemies attacking my mind. I need your strength. I know. So, so now you're giving only after the battles are won. It, yes, amen. I speak and then mom is saying, oh, why didn't you tell me? Mom, come on, I'm a warrior. Amen. In fact, that testimony of hers, I, I didn't know anything till uh, uh, she uh, sent you, Brother Johnson. I didn't know everything, anything that she was, you know, she and God was having this, uh, the battle was going, you know, God had taken the battle and uh, she was doing it. I didn't know anything till I only saw the testimony. So, praise God. She did not mention anything to us. Pastor Giselle, I didn't know anything. So, so Giselle, you are always welcome on the panel, but you see that you study as well. Others yes. will be an expert on the panel. And then they will tell you, what is a thetoscope? She will say, the thetoscope is the word of God. <laughs> so, so in that time, you'll have to write what they teach you as well. You can't write the word of God. Yes. So let the balance be that you give your time to your studies as well. Okay. Yes, brother. Oh. Otherwise, the other they say this girl is talking so much of Jesus, but she has not yet finished a course. In a course, she is a failure. No, no. no you know, no. Jesus never failed. Yes. Do you know Jesus never failed? Yes. One day, a priest was preaching this: Jesus never fails. And the translator was translating. He translated. When Jesus went to school, he never failed. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know the testimony is, I'm on God's anointing and on divine anointing, the divine teacher, the Holy Ghost, is going to teach me medical things, and I'm not going to be the ordinary doctor. I'm a doctor on divine inspiration. Amen. When I touch people, even the touch has power to heal them. Divine healing, Papa. Divine healing. Amen. Can I get a thumbs up from you? 
Yes. Thank you so much. Two. Okay, two. Two. <laughs> It's lunch break and you're always invited. Why don't you visit tonight to Melbourne if you're free? Oh, yes, definitely, brother. Definitely. Okay. You can come every day with small testimonies and share. There's, it's, nobody's going to obstruct you, okay? Oh, and the more you share about your life, the more you grow. Amen. Okay? Bye. Bye. It's lunch break. So, Giselle, we want you to make the prayer for all of us who are watching that everyone has a desire for the, for the relationship that you carry now with the word of God. Come on, go ahead. Make up a small prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for filling all of us with your love, for shedding your anointing on each and every one of us. Because you have given your spirit to each and every one of us. And the same spirit of God that raised you from the dead lives in us. Christ lives in us. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us your love. Thank you, Lord, for being with us through every situation. Thank you for sending your help of the Holy Spirit who teaches us more and more about the mysteries of faith who helps us to deepen our faith who comforts us who teaches us everything who brings to our remembrance the word of God when the enemy attacks our mind Lord we will face trials by the enemy, but we will never be defeated because we wear the armor of God. Now, Jesus, help us to operate in your agape love, to be more like you, so that we are called Christians by our love. And so that Everyone else sees your love through us. Thank you, Lord, for being so faithful. And Lord, if you are for us, who can be against us? We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 And amen. Thank you so much, Isel. Amazing. Amen. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Praise God. Bye. Praise God. Bye. Bye, baby. Bye. So, uh, we'll be break for lunch for 30 minutes and we'll be back. Okay. Praise God. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. God. Thank you, sister Janet. Wonderful testimony. Praise God. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Praise God.